Hey, what's up, YouTube? Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Fully Fishing Channel. Aren't you guys happy to see the sun? I mean, the sun is actually right over there. But aren't you guys glad that it is actually daytime? Myself, I've been tired of doing that nighttime fishing gig, you know what I'm saying? So for a change of environment, today I'm here at the Intracoastal Waterway in Florida for my 10th outing of 2017. But before we talk a little about before we talk about that, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about that mysterious fish that we caught last night, you know? I mean, I actually caught three of them right if you guys remember and I had no idea what that was if you guys watch the video I actually hinted that that fish reminded me of the American silver perch but I really had no clue what it was so anyways let me just tell you this quick story right so I go home from last night after catching three of those fish right and I talked to my friend my friend Patrick Kerwin you know uh, we discussed a little bit like hey Patch do you have any idea what this thing is exactly right and he actually hints at me that that fish is this thing called a striped uh, a striped what was it again man a, a striped croaker yeah right see it took me a little while to remember right and I'm telling him like hey man I never heard of anything called a striped croaker you know so I go to Google I Google it up and it actually exists, you know, but I went to Google Images, there was actually very information on it, very little information on it, you know. There were only three photos on Google Images, like credible photos. It actually looked like what we caught, but I wasn't sure about it. So, you know, I did what any multi-species angler would do, right? I went on Google, uh, Wikipedia showed up, I read the Wikipedia page, and I did the first thing that every multi-species angler should do. I got a scientific name. I realized the scientific name of the striped croaker was Bayerdiella sancti luciae, right? And I was a little bit happier about that because, you know, I, I, did, I did tell you guys that it reminded me of the American silver, you know, perch. And they are both in the Bayerdiella gen, gen, genus, you know, so they are like close cousins, right? But of course, that information wasn't enough for me. So, you know, I went, Googled a little bit more, and I actually found out that this species of fish is actually more common in the Caribbean and not so much here in Florida, which is why the information that I found was so limited. Anyways, what happens is I ended up finding this Spanish name for the fish, right? It's called like... Uh, Ronco, Ronco Caribeño, I think, you know, I went to Google, I googled Ronco Caribeño, I finally found some articles, credible articles, like journals, you know, done by people who did, you know, research with this species, and I found out that this species of fish, the striped croaker, has another scientific name, isn't that weird, you know, it's like synonym scientific names, you know, Corvulus or Corvula, you know, Sancti Lucia, something like that, you know, but I mean, this is not unknown in the fishing community, you know, one main example is actually the white catfish, sometimes people call it the Ictalurus catus, sometimes people call it the Ameurus catus, you guys can google this, rock bass is another example, so, you know, this is just to show you guys, right, after I plugged the other scientific name on Google, you know, I think it was Corvula or Corvulus, something like that, you know, uh, Sancti Lucia, I actually found more information and more photos of it, you know, so this is to show you guys that finding the identity of a single species is not easy, you know, so I'm still not 100% sure if that was actually a striped croaker, but I am pretty confident about it, okay, so that makes the species number 152 on my list, which I am going to add to my Smug Mug Fish Photo Database when I go back to Philadelphia. All right, enough talking, about, <laughs> enough talking about that. Let's get this fishing started. The Intracoastal Canal is looking good. I came here for a change of environment, a change of species. Hopefully, we're going to catch something new, something different. You stay tuned. So I need even a smaller hook even for this. Yeah, come up here. What is this? Micro fishing at its best right here, man. So small. I'm pretty sure I don't have this thing yet on my species list. 
whatever this thing is is my species number 153 right here you know some type of blenny looks like i don't know hey we gotta take a photo and we'll find out later seriously folks check this out huh? whatever this is it is a little beautiful type of fish right here that anyone who doesn't really do micro fishing would easily miss okay and look yet another species for my list yeah that's that's one of the joys of being a multi-species angler you know what i'm saying the fact that you get to see the big the odds and the small all the layers of the little biodiversity down here this is this is crazy all right anyways go back down where we belong there fish there we go another one of these huh well, apparently they are all frill thing goby down there beautiful little fish beautiful little fish but uh, i'm getting tired of this goby now since the species doesn't change so i'm just gonna release this one we gotta try to catch some different species now maybe down the bridge i gotta tell you for a fish this small this fish is quite pretty though nah not gonna lie you know so there you go go back where you belong Oh, we got something. What is this? Oh, hell yeah, what we got? Oh, son, it's a puffer fish. It is a puffer fish. Man, I thought for sure we had something nice on. Second species of the day. Let's see what type of puffer this is. A checker, a checker puffer. <laughs> hey man, at least we got a puffer fish, right? Hey, puffer fish is still better than nothing. So let me just quickly tell you guys about the checker puffer, all right? Of course, puffer fish, they put an air in them when they feel a little threatened, you know? So they always become like a little ball. Checker puffer got this little little part, like, you know, marks on top of it, okay? Now, handling any type of puffer, you definitely don't want to put your hand close to its mouth, okay? You see this little rabbit like these? This can do some damage to you, okay? So always take your photos. It's not poisonous to hold them sometimes to eat them you know just take your photos and let them go you'll be just fine so there we go fellas final view of our little checker puffer beautiful eyes i gotta tell you that much just be very careful when unhooking this creature there we go quick quick unhook here let me just release it right over here bye bye damn son that he was fast to go away from me Probably thought I was going to eat some fugu, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right, back to fishing. Oh, this one looks dark. Come on. It's got to be a crested, right? Is this a crested? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, dude. After so many thing, I think this is a crested goby, folks. Species number 154 for us. Dorsal fin shape is definitely different. It's kind of concave, convex. Dark in color. No vertical markings. Blue dots on its face. Very special. This is quite an accomplishment for us today. Because this is a beautiful fish. Indeed. Dark. Very nice fins here. I'm not sure if this is a crested goby or not, I will find out about it later, but this is a species number 154 for me, okay? So I've got to treat this fish nicely and let it go right there. Bang! So small, so dark, I can see from here. Is that a crested? I think so, it looks dark. Yeah, there you go yeah a little crested little crested goldfish goby wait is this a crested goby yeah i think so i think so colors are a little bit weird you know what i'm saying sometimes you can confuse them let me take a few photos just in case i don't know folks these gobies they all have different colors you know this one here is shaded green it's shaded green with some red lines on its body. 
I'm not sure if this is a crested goby or not. That's why I took a few photos, you know. Colors are very weird, you know. There's one that is entirely dark. This one here is like green with red stripes. And the other one has like vertical bars. Hey, man, I don't know. I'll just take photos of all of them. We got to identify later, you know. Too complicated to identify this a smaller species of fish. Got to tell you that. <laughs> Got to tell you that much, you know. Hey. Oh, man. Folks, morning time is over. I've been fishing here at the Intracoastal Waterway for about two and a half hours now. Time to go back to the hotel, pick my mama up, have some lunch, maybe do some fishing in the afternoon. I will try to sneak out today again. And I mean, today's fishing session, huh? Who thought it was going to be micro fishing? I mean, who thought it was going to be a goby type of day, huh? so many goby down here it is ridiculous and the worst part was the smallest hook that i brought with me was a size 12 hook it barely fit in its mouth you know so it was really really tough to catch them i ended up catching good numbers of fish today but it was with a lot of effort if i had a size 16 or a size 20 hook i would be catching them non-stop I will identify those gobies later, you know, I'm pretty sure I caught two different species, two new species for me by the way, but um, there, may, there may be a third one, there may be not, I'll identify later, okay? Folks, if I fish in the afternoon, you guys gotta see me again, <laughs> same outing, you know, we will see, alright? But for now, that is it. So tie lines as always, thank you very much for watching, thanks for supporting EPF on social media. I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, listen up, all three of you. I ain't gonna give you any fish today, you get it? Doesn't matter how you look at me. You can look at me good if you want, I ain't gonna give you anything. So come on, shush, shush. Jeez Louise, man, these pelicans, man.